Thank you to our listeners for joining us for another Saint Spotlight. Today we're speaking with Kelly French, Thomas More Class of 2002, as well as a staff member extraordinaire. Kelly was recently promoted to Vice President for Strategy and Impact. Congratulations, Kelly, and thank you for being our Saint Spotlight. Thanks, Judy. I'm happy to talk with you. Kelly, tell us a little about this new position and the duties that it includes. Sure. Uh, my position is really about making sure we are effective in meeting our mission and our strategic priorities, and then also keeping us in compliance with all governmental requirements. So that's really two primary pieces. The first is oversight and execution of our strategic plan, and our impact as a Catholic liberal arts institution. Right now, we're currently developing our next strategic plan. We've been hosting town hall meetings with our employees and having conversations with the Board of Trustees over this past year um, since President Chilo came last summer, and we're really trying to establish a realistic plan that moves us forward. Um, so we hope to be launching the new plan in the fall. I'm very excited about it. I think it's focused and innovative and achievable. And then the second primary piece of my job is leadership related to accreditation, compliance, and governmental requirements. So that's like SAC COC, regional accreditation, implementing the Higher Education Opportunity Act. Um, when that finally goes through the government, we'll need to implement that. So all of this really takes a lot of collaboration across the university to be successful, right? We couldn't implement a strategic plan or meet our SAC COC accreditation without it being a team effort. And institutional effectiveness is really, uh, you know, being effective at each department and program level and then also more broadly as an institution. So I really focus on building relationships across the university to accomplish all of our goals. And it really is a team effort here at Thomas More. Do you have any insight for us on what the top priorities are immediately for Thomas More's strategy? Um, I think, you know, one that will definitely be a key component of the next strategic plan that I'm particularly passionate about is retention and student success. In my current role, I don't work directly with students, but I'm really passionate about higher education and the impact it has on individual lives. And we know we need to do a little bit of work in this area. We have a lot of great faculty and staff here at Thomas More that are supportive of our students on a regular basis, right? But we hear from students and faculty staff and donors and the board and really all of our constituents across that, you know, maybe our students need more space to gather or we need more initiatives to better support our students. It's just, it's a changing world, right? Mm -hmm. um, and sure. we need to make sure that we're providing the right support for our students. Can you give us a little bit of information of how you can use data to confirm or analyze the impact of some of these initiatives. Yeah, I think as a small faith-based institution, it's critically important that we use our resources wisely. So that requires us to analyze information and really be thoughtful before we make decisions. And then as we are implementing those strategies, you know, we need to be monitoring our progress, right? So the typical cycle of assessment and data begins with establishing a strategy or an, or an initiative, and then we think about how we'll evaluate our success. Then as we implement, we review our key metrics and indicators along the way to see how we're making progress. And then we use that information to adjust or establish new strategies to help us move forward. We recently were involved with the SAC COC accreditation process. Right. How did Thomas More fare with that reaffirmation process? Yeah, it actually, you know, it really ended up being an extremely beneficial process. It takes a lot of time and energy. It was a good year probably of most of my time and a lot of people on campus, right? It, it Again, like it's a team effort here. But through that, it really allowed us to evaluate our processes to ensure we're working in the best interest of our students. And the reaffirmation process is a peer review process. So a student affairs professional, a CFO, a provost at other institutions read our reports. They came on site to talk with us, and that's really helpful to hear what our peers are doing so that higher education in general can all be working together to support students. We plan to be fully reaffirmed in December. You are a member of the class of 2002. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about your experience as a student that stood out? And can you fill us in a little bit about the history of how you went from student to employee? Yeah, sure. I always joke, it's not very funny, but I tell my kids, you know, <laughs> no one grows up thinking I want to be an institutional researcher, right? <laughs> um, 
So I was a history major here. The skills I learned, like research and writing, right, are yes. have been really beneficial for my career. I mean, that's the core of institutional research. It's really what we need in any job, right? We all need to be able to think critically, see issues from multiple perspectives, be able to articulate ourselves well. Here, set that foundation for me. There are several classes I remember being very eye-opening and learning about the world. Um, I can think of Dr. Camp. I know a lot of alumni remember his sociology classes are definitely were impactful and philosophy and certainly my history courses. I was originally not planning to attend college after high school. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I chose Thomas More. I think that makes me realize even more the benefits of higher education. I really think it can make a difference in, in people's lives. I was a work-study student in the registrar's office for my entire four years as okay. an undergraduate. I think the hardest part from going to an employee, changing, you know, calling my professors from doctor to their first names. I think that's <laughs> one of the most, because we have several alums who work here, and we all joke that that's one of the hardest things. So when I was a work-study student in the registrar's office, I was always looking for more work. When I graduated, I pursued my Master's of Arts in History uh, at the University of Cincinnati. I originally wanted to get my doctorate degree, but once I finished my Master's, I realized that wasn't my path. During that time, I had worked part-time in the registrar's office, and when I finished my Master's, the registrar position opened up, and they asked me to apply, and I took it, and my position here has been evolving ever since. Well, that's excellent. Do you have any advice for Thomas More students? Um, I know that the cliche is get involved. I really do think if if you're going to do it, invest in it and do it. I think I was in one club, a history club. You know, you don't have to do tons of things or be super involved, but I do think it's helpful and to build those connections and, you know, find your mentors, your faculty mentors. It might not be your advisor. It may just be an instructor that you connected with or someone like that. But I think, you know, building those connections you know, with those individuals um, will help you through graduate school. We all need advice sometimes. We all need help sometimes. Um, And I think that there's a lot of resources on college campuses to do that. Well, excellent advice. Kelly, thanks so much for being a part of the Scene Spotlight. Thank you, Judy.